Welcome to the second installment of the MQ2 series. This video will focus on defining and executing basic commands, along with applying them in game. If you've got the basics covered and are more interested in complex commands and plugins, skip ahead to the third installment here. MQ2 is consistently one of the most intimidating things about EZ Server, and also a significant source of frustration. It will take time and effort to get comfortable with this program, but once you do, you'll question how you ever got along without it. Now, I don't mean to brag, but I know a thing or two about MacroQuest. I impressed the admins so much. They asked me to develop an AI that could eliminate all of the cheaters and exploiters on Easy Server. I happily accepted, and have been developing a sentient robo-admin to police the server. <clears throat> May I present to you the Bionic Inquisition Technology to Control Hacking, or better known as the... <laughs> okay, you know what? It's just a temporary name. Uh, we have some... Becky! <laughs> We're still deciding on an official... Someone get Becky from marketing down here now! Let's not focus on the name. Check out this marvel of MacroQuest engineering. Tremble and despair. Presence of no wrath, for the hour of judgment is at hand. The sins of exploitation and corruption will be obliterated by the weight of my mighty brand hammer. Bow before the majesty of a perfect. Oh no, my voice modulation has failed. You've got to be kidding me. Bow before the majesty of a perfect metal god. Just stop it! You're embarrassing everyone with your nonsense. Please don't leave me. It's cold and dark, and no use me sexually. You deserve no less, you glorified garbage can. Becky! To gain a bit of perspective, we have to look at these commands and hotkeys like a line of code in a computer program. Because essentially, that's what it is. There are three primary sections in a command. Let's take a look at a command and break it down. We can deconstruct this line into three pieces. Slash BCT tank bait is the first piece, and what we will call the target. This piece establishes who is performing the action. The second piece is slash slash stick, and what we will call the action. This piece expresses what the target is going to do, and it's easy to identify because we're using two slashes instead of one. The third piece is hold exclamation point, front, UW, and what we will call the qualifier. This piece acts as the substance to the action. Although there are many types of commands, almost all of them follow the same syntax. There are three types of target lines we will utilize for easy server, slash BCT, slash BCA, and slash BCAA. Slash BCT sends commands directly to a character or channel. It acts like a tell or whisper. These are useful for performing a specific action or casting a specific spell on one character. It's also very useful once we start utilizing channel commands, which is explained later in this series. Slash BCA is a command that is given to all of your characters except for the character that initiates it. Basically, it's your character telling all of your other characters what to do. Slash BCAA is a command that goes to all of your characters, including the character that gives the command. This works well with giving commands to speak in unison or activating items, which we'll go over later. If you're creating a macro for your primary character, you won't need to use any of these. Since you're giving yourself commands, you can ignore the target piece of the command line and jump straight into the action or qualifier. Now that we understand the syntax of a command line and how to utilize the target command types, let's experiment with some actions and qualifiers. I will demonstrate these actions with a few of my mindless bots, or as I like to call them, Roombas. The stick command is a very useful tool for both navigating your Roomba army and orienting your characters during combat. Stick is a much smarter version of the slash follow command that exists in EverQuest. Unlike slash follow, which tends to break after a certain distance and sometimes endlessly orbits your main character. What the? See, that's the type of... I'm gonna kick your ass. Slash stick never breaks, and it has a great course correct feature when your Roombas get stuck. Let's set up a macro to get our Roombas to follow us around. I'm going to flash the macro on the screen for your reference, and then we'll break it down. Take a moment to pause if needed. We're going to use slash BCA because we want all of our characters except for our main character to follow the command. 
First, we want to have our Roombas target the character prior to executing the stick command, and in this instance we'll be using newt. This will be expressed as slash bca slash slash tar newt. Next we will use the command line slash bca slash slash stick. See how the Roombas react and stick close to newt? This makes movement very easy. Sometimes the stick command can be annoying, especially when your characters stick to the front of you while you're trying to click on an NPC or turn in items. We can expand on the stick command with some qualifiers to prevent this from happening, and we can also utilize this in combat. Let's utilize the command line we saw earlier. By adding the qualifier hold exclamation point front UW, our Roombas will stick to our target and will position itself to the rear of the target. Let's break down what each piece of this qualifier does. Hold is the qualifier that forces the character to stick to the target regardless if the target changes. For example, your cleric's epic weapon procs a heal through combat, so it's currently on the target wailing away. But you've run into trouble and need some Tower of Vi in your life. No problem. By using the hold command, your cleric can switch targets to you, cast your heal, and as long as you command it to retarget the NPC, it will resume combat without bouncing around the battlefield. The exclamation front qualifier commands the character to avoid the frontal arc of the target. It will stick to the back half of the target at all times and recalibrate itself if the target changes direction. This is very useful for keeping your melee Roombas at the back of your target and also keeping your army at your back while moving. The UW qualifier instructs the character to face the target along the Z-axis or more simply looking up and down. This is useful in underwater situations, hence the name UW. It keeps the Roomba looking up at big targets, looking down at small targets, and assists in navigating open spaces while underwater or levitating. So now, altogether, if we use the same targeting command line in conjunction with our new stick command line, we should see all of our characters line up behind our primary tune. Another quick example with the stick command is a looting button. By using some of the previous command lines, we can create a really handy looting assistant. Since we're making this for our primary character, we won't need to use slash bct slash bca or slash bcaa. Line 1 will be slash tar corpse. Line 2 will use slash stick 1, which will move our character directly on top of the corpse. And line 3 will be slash loot. Now that we understand how the stick command works, let's utilize it in our attack macro. I'm going to introduce a new targeting command that is a good replacement for the assist function. The first line in our macro is going to be slash bca slash slash target id dollar sign left curly bracket target dot id right curly bracket. This commands all of your Roombas to target your current target without engaging auto attack. The qualifier id dollar sign left curly bracket target dot id right curly bracket identifies the target of whoever gave the command. Our second line is going to add a new qualifier to our stick command slash bca slash slash stick 12 uw behind. The numeric qualifier 12 identifies how much distance is placed between the target and the character. By my estimates, every five increments is approximately one step away from the center of the target. We're also using the alternative qualifier behind instead of the previous qualifier exclamation point front. The difference between the two is the behind qualifier attempts to keep the character directly behind the target, while the exclamation point front maintains the back 180 degrees as acceptable. Either one can be used, but for the sake of introducing new qualifiers, we'll go with behind. The third and fourth line, we're going to switch to the slash BCAA target command, because we want all of our characters, including the one clicking the macro, to perform the commands. Line 3 will be slash bca slash slash attack on, which mostly speaks for itself. This initiates your auto attack, and in conjunction with slash bcaa, it will initiate auto attack on all of your characters. The last line is slash bcaa slash slash pet attack, which also initiates all of your character's pets to engage the target and attack. So in summary, this macro targets the NPC, sends your Roombas behind your target, turns on auto attack, and sends in your pets. That's pretty cool for pressing one button. We can refine this macro even more with multi-line and channel commands, but we'll save that for the advanced video. Now that we've gone over melee attacks, let's take a look at spellcaster commands. We spoke about a cleric casting spells in a previous example, and I want to expand on that premise. In this macro, we're going to learn about three new command types, key press, pause, and casting. In this example, Newt will be our tank and Happy Heals will be our healer. 
Let's break down this macro. Line 1 will use the familiar targeting command we learned previously. We are only utilizing one character, so we will use the slash bct target type. So we will use slash bct happy heels slash slash tar newt. Line 2 will use a new action type called key press. Key press is interesting because it acts in place of clicking on a macro or pressing a key bind on your keyboard, but doesn't emulate a key being pressed so it won't interfere with typing. Key press is a bit restrictive because it can only be utilized by key bindings and hotbars. There is a bunch of things you can do with key press, but for now let's just stick to the basics. Happy Heels has a hotkey on his main hotbar in position 6, so line 2 will be slash bct happy heels slash slash key press 6. This will click his 6th hotkey on his main bar, causing him to use his epic clicky. Line 3 will also use a new action type called pause. Pause is a way to stagger multiple commands from accidentally canceling out. If commands are given too quickly, especially if there's a cooldown, it can cause a secondary command to send but not be received. To stop this, we will add a slash pause 1 to break up the two commands. Pause goes in increments of 10, with 10 being 1 second. Pause can also be used to delay an action, such as casting two spells back to back that require casting or refresh times. We'll explore them later, but for now, we just want to stagger the commands, so a tenth of a second will do just fine. Line 4 brings our final, new action type called Casting. The Casting command automates clicks on your spell bar. In this example, we're going to cast a group heal called Word of Vivification 2. The spell name must be in quotation marks and must be the exact name. So this last line should read slash bct happy heals slash slash casting quotation mark word of vivification to quotation mark. Bringing the whole thing together now, we have a macro that targets our tank, attempts to click the cleric's epic, pauses for a tenth of a second, and then casts a group heal. This can be spammed during difficult situations, or we can add it to a rotation of key presses during combat, which we'll explore later in this series. There is an alternative method to key press that also has its advantages. This action type is called item notify. Item notify is more useful in some instances, like our current healing macro, but also serves a different function than key press. Both have their advantages. We can change out the key press command in our previous macro and add in item notify instead. This will free up a hotkey spot on our hotbar. By using slash bct happy heels slash slash item notify 13 right mouse up, this will engage the cleric epic just the same as if it was a hotkey on our bar. Breaking that down a bit, item notify can be used for both worn items and backpack slots. By using the item notify ID numbers, you can activate items on your character, and if you have the ROF2 client, you can even activate items from your bags. Here is a quick reference to see which ID numbers go with which pieces of armor. Right mouse up emulates a right click on the item you're notifying. With that being said, we can make a quick macro for travel. If you weren't aware, not only does your flower charm teleport you to either Surefall or Nexus, but soon after breaking into the custom content, your boots and belt will teleport you to Nexus and Stonehive respectively. We can make a macro using the item notify command to teleport our characters in unison. Slash BCAA slash slash item notify 19 right mouse up for Nexus, or 20 for Stonehive, and 0 for Surefall or Nexus if you're using your merchant level charms, this will teleport all of our characters to our desired zones. If you're using ROF2, we can also activate any clickable item in our bags as well, but we'll save that for the advanced video. The last command we're going to discuss is some of the map functions. MQ2 has a great plugin for maps that shows you where every NPC and playing character is at all times. Sometimes this can be a bit of a burden, especially when you're navigating mazes or tight quarters, and you can't see the map drawn underneath all the NPC names. A simple command to clear the map is slash map hide NPC. To bring back the NPCs, use slash map show NPC. I frequently use map hide in tier 5. I tend to avoid the corals during my essence farming, and their names all over the map distract me while I'm pulling. So by using the command line slash map hide coral, it clears any NPC with coral in the name. You can also reverse this method, say in Jagged Pine, while farming superior lightstones. By using a small macro, we can clear the map and show only the wisps. Line 1 would be slash map hide NPC, and line 2 would be slash map show wisp. Now you can easily locate your targets. Let's take a moment to cover all of the things we learned. 
We spent some time breaking down the structure of a command line and how to adopt these into expressions that benefit us. We went over in detail how to get our Roombas to follow us, as well as how to stick to a target and murder it. We also briefly touched on getting our casters in on the action with the casting command. Don't worry, we'll cover this in detail in the advanced video. We discovered the benefits of key press and item notify, and lastly we learned how to utilize the map commands. You see, MQ2 is not so bad once you get the hang of it. You're on your way to becoming an MQ2 wizard. In the next video we're going to expand on a lot of these fundamentals. I'll teach you how to set up complex macros using multi-line, streamline your commands through the use of channels, explore additional plugins, and we'll learn how to create automation to both logging into EQ and setting up your raid. If you want to learn more, check out the easy wiki in the forums. Hey, hey, hey! Get back inside! But the gnomes... Oh, oh, so this is how you thank me for giving you intelligence, by sassing me! Huh. <laughs> Fine, I'll use this remote and guide you right back into their engineering room! Please don't. They're small in stature, but you can't ignore their girth. You should move along to the next video. This is only gonna get weirder from here.